We are back with the Tennessee Volunteers Dynasty Mode here on NCAA 14. Real quick, just a little bit of scouting to start off the episode. If you want to see our full scouting, make sure to wait till after this game between us and, of course, the LSU Tigers, and you'll see our full scouting with weeks four and five. A key prospect, of course, everyone's looking out for Arch Manning. We're second in the race for Arch, but... It's not looking too good. I don't think we're going to get him again. More at all these prospects at the end of the video. So if you want to see that, make sure you stay until the very end. Real quick, a look at the rankings. You got Bama 1, Oklahoma 2, Iowa State 3, UNC 4, Wisconsin 5, Florida 6, AM 7, Clemson at 8, Georgia at 9, Ohio State 10, 11, Louisiana, 12, Miami, 13, Michigan. 14 USC, 15 Cincinnati, 16 Ole Miss, there's LSU at 17, you got Oregon at 18, Arizona State 19, Auburn 20, NC State 21, Texas at 22, and then from there, of course, you got UCLA, Virginia, and Notre Dame. Just take a quick look at LSU right now. They were number 10 before this week, but they lost to Auburn. 3-26 on the road. Now they got to go back on the road to Knoxville to take on the Volunteers. This is a opportunity, a huge opportunity for this squad. This Volunteers team can knock off LSU for the second straight week and a team in LSU again who just got blown out on the road against Auburn. We've got to take advantage of this and improve our season record to 3-1 and one before next week again. Doesn't get any easier. Probably our toughest game so far this season is next week. We got to go on the road to take on number nine, Georgia. Last week, again, we lost to number six, Florida. It was a tough game, but we couldn't get the best out of Emory Jones and the Gators. And oh yeah, by the way, after the Georgia game, you got to take on another ranked team. In Notre Dame, you got to go to South Bend. Then we got a game with the South Carolina Gamecocks, which honestly, not too concerned about that one. That's a game we can definitely win. And then you got the game against Alabama afterwards as well. It's a, such a tough schedule for Tennessee. Again, we said at the beginning of the season, though, this isn't our time to win the SEC. I don't think it is. I think, again, you got to look either next year or a couple years in the future is when Tennessee is really going to make a run at the entire thing. This season, though, is a building season. We're trying to pick up some wins, hopefully get some ranked programs. And honestly, as long as we can get into a bowl game and get into the postseason, I will be really excited about that. So it all starts tonight, though. It continues tonight back here in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's the number 17 ranked LSU Tigers taking on the Tennessee Volunteers and oh by the way Hendon Hooker is back for the first time since week one where he got injured here in this very stadium against Bowling Green Hooker is back but starting with the football will be the LSU Tigers and at quarterback for LSU is going to be Max Johnson and he will find Trey Palmer for a gain of 14 to start it off for LSU the Tigers now for a third and two Johnson's going to keep on the option McCullough will bring him down with Max Johnson picking up eight yards and a new set of downs for the Tigers now it's a third and 12 though Johnson dropping back to his right he will go to the receiver it is going to be Chris Hilton Jr. Hilton for only six yards it brings up the kick team for LSU that one's up and it is good oh my goodness I mean that kicker has got a leg on him it's going to be 3 0 for LSU. We check other scores around the SEC. Texas AM barely getting out of the game at home against the Arkansas Razorbacks. They win it 27 21. AM coming into today, the number seven ranked team in the country. So AM still stays again in the top 10. And Florida barely escapes out of Kentucky. 3 0 are the Gators now after beating Kentucky 13 10. Big win right there for Emory Jones and the Florida Gators. Here comes Hendon Hooker. Back into the starting lineup. Hooker is going to go on a read option and picking up 16 yards on his first carry. Big play right there for your quarterback. Second and 10 now for the Volunteers. It will be a handoff to Tyon Evans. Evans up the middle. Going to break one loose. It's a gain of 15. Big play right there for Tyon Evans. First down to the 24-yard line. Now it's a third and 10, though, for Hendon Hooker. And the Volunteers. Hooker will look to Valus Jones Jr., Valus Jones is only going to get nine. It's a fourth in inches. And now we're going to go for it. Out the gun, Tyon Evans on the halfback dive is going to pick up the first down and a gain of nine, setting up for a first and goal for the Volunteers. Hooker on a read option, hands it off to Tyon Evans, and Evans gets it. Wow. What a drive for the Volunteers. Not a classic Tennessee drive. We use a lot of the run on that drive, but oh my goodness. 7-3, Hedden Hooker's back in the lineup, and the Volunteers up early against number 17, LSU. You look at Max Johnson, though, getting the football back. He's jumping over, guys, and Max Johnson picking up 22 yards on that run. Here comes a first and 10 for LSU. Johnson dropping back, looking to throw, going to his right, and he's going to go down. Big sack right there by Tennessee. They drop 
Johnson for a loss of nine, and now it's a third and 13 for LSU. Johnson looking to throw to his left. That ball, oh, it's gonna be picked off. It was off the hands of the LSU receiver, and Tennessee's going to take advantage. We're going to get the football at about midfield as we return from the end of the first quarter. The Volunteers up by four, getting the football back. Here we go, man. Tennessee's got it from about the 45 here on a second and eight. Hendon Hooker on a slot option. He's going to keep, and the run game is working so far for Tennessee. Hendon Hooker for a gain of 14 yards. I mean, hey, the knee injury is looking pretty good right now. First and 10 for Hooker now. Scrambling to his right. He's going to have to throw it. He goes to Bayless Jones Jr. It's Jones' second catch of the ball game. He's got Tennessee down to about the 30-yard line for a second and 10. Hooker to his right. He's got Tyon Evans out the backfield. Evans staying on his feet. And oh my goodness, Tyon Evans. His second touchdown of the game. This time, it's a receiving touchdown. Big play right there. He breaks off about three tackles. And Tennessee's up 14 to 3 over LSU. All right, here comes the LSU offense back out on the field from their own 40 yard line. Max Johnson gonna take a shot. McAuliffe can't bring that one down. It is caught right there by Trey Palmer. And now Palmer's got the LSU Tigers in the red zone. Johnson looking to Devontae Lee. Lee's only gonna pick up seven. It brings up for a fourth and inches. LSU keeps the offense on the field. Johnson's gonna throw in fourth and inches. And he's going to complete one to the right. It's going to Chris Hilton. Hilton's in the end zone. And Tennessee could have got a big stop right there instead. The LSU Tigers will make this a four-point game. It's 14-10 to with Tennessee getting the ball back. Jacob Warren's going to have a catch right there of nine yards down to about the 35. We'll see what Tennessee does on a third and one. They are going to run the football. Hooker's going to keep on a read option. And LSU plays that perfectly. They had the dive. They had Hooker as well. And now LSU is going to get the football back after a Tennessee punt. So LSU's got it from about the 35-yard line. Max Johnson on a read option. He keeps. And Max Johnson is going to power his way down all the way to the 31-yard line. Johnson for a gain of 30. It's a huge run right there for LSU. And now it's a second and 12 for Johnson, the offense. Johnson dropping back, looking. He will dump it off to the running back right there. It is Tyron Davis Prince. And it's a gain of 12 through the air. LSU's got it for a second and four. They go back. Back to the option. Johnson's going to pitch it over to Lee. And oh my goodness, can we bring him down? Oh, they go triple option on us. Devontae Lee's going to get into the end zone. He's the pitch man. And LSU goes up 17 to 14 as we get an update. Cool. Ole Miss is playing Alabama. Ole Miss goes on their first drive. They kick a field goal. All right. Ole Miss is up 3-0 on the Alabama Crimson Tide. 16 versus 1 in that matchup. But... Man, Tennessee now down by three. Hendon Hooker gets it back on a third and 13. He's just going to dump it off to Javante Payton. And Javante Payton's not going to get much. We're going to have to punt it back to LSU. And now LSU's got it from about midfield. Max Johnson to his right. He connects with Chris Hilton. Hilton's got him down to the 25-yard line. Johnson on a first and 10 going to the screen. He's got Tyron Davis Prince again. And Davis Prince has got LSU down to the five-yard line. Huge play. First and goal for LSU. Johnson dropping back, looking to throw. That ball is going to be caught by Kayshawn Butte. Touchdown for Johnson. He starts this game 16 for 17. The only incompletion is the pick. And LSU's up 24 to 14. Tennessee will get the football back with a minute left here in the second quarter. There's a ball completed, though, to Javante Payton. Payton's going to pick up 32 yards down to about the 35-yard line. Here comes a third and five for Hendon Hooker. Scrambling to his left. Hooker on the run. He's got Jacob Warren. Warren's got the first down. Huge play right there by Tennessee to extend this drive. Here comes a first and 10 play action fake for Hooker. Scrambling to his right on the run. He has got Fant. And there will be Princeton Fant down to the 10-yard line. It's a gain of 16. It's a third and four now, though, for Tennessee. Hooker running in circles in the pocket, and he's going to find Cedric Tillman. I don't know how we found Cedric Tillman right there. That was so unconventional, but I don't care, man. As long as we're on the board before the end of the half, absolutely huge. It's 24-21 now. LSU still up by three. Only 17 seconds left here in the half. And yeah, there's a reason we're showing you kickoffs. Again, there's a reason we show you these. Trey Palmer to the outside is going to get LSU all the way down to the 40-yard line. Oh, there's only eight seconds left. And remember what I said earlier about LSU's kicker having a damn boot? Look at this! 57 yards? Are you joking? Oh my goodness! 
A kickoff return down to the 40-something yard line is going to set up for a 57-yard field goal. And LSU, they were up 24-21. Now they're up by 6. It is 27-21 as we go into the second half. However, though, the Volunteers get the football. All right, new half. First and 10 for Hendon Hooker in the offense. He will keep on a read option. Hooker's got some room to work, and Hendon Hooker right there with a big gain down to over midfield and now in to LSU territory. First and 10, I mean, come on. Can we give this man some time to throw the football? It's a loss of eight, and now it's a third and 18 for Tennessee. Hooker dropping back, going to, oh my goodness, Jacob Warren. We got to catch that football, man. We got to catch it. Because now we can't even go for it on fourth down. We have to punt it to LSU. LSU's got it now down to midfield. That ball's caught by Chris Hilton for a gain of four. Sets up for a fourth and one. Max Johnson in the offense stay on the field. And Johnson's going to find Chris Hilton for the second straight catch. Hilton for a gain of nine. Extends his LSU drive in. Not looking good right now for the Volunteers, because here comes Johnson stepping up in the pocket on a third and ten. You gotta be joking. He finds Brian Thomas Jr. up the middle. It's a perfect ball in the post route, and LSU goes up by 13. Tennessee can't get the defense off the field on a third and ten. And the Tigers are going to make you pay. So it's 34-21 for LSU. Hendon Hooker staying in this game, man, though. He's going to find Valus Jones Jr. over the middle. Valus Jones got him down to the 40-yard line for a second and 12. Hooker looking to throw. That ball is going to be picked off, though, by LSU. Hooker was trying to force it right there. And that's not good because LSU gets the football back on a third and eight. Max Johnson is going to take a shot. That ball is actually incomplete, so... We're going to get it back down by 13 points. Here we go. Hendon Hooker on a second and nine. Looking to throw the football. Scrambling to his right. Hendon Hooker. He's going to find Bale Jones. Don't know how he did it, but he finds Jones for a gain of 11. Tennessee still staying in this ball game. First and 10 for Hooker. On the Texas route, it's going to be Tyon Evans. Evans picking up 13 yards. Tennessee now back over midfield. Here comes another first and 10. Hooker dropping back. Stepping up in the pocket. Oh, look at that. The acceleration out of Hendon Hooker. He finds his way through the LSU defense, and he gets Tennessee down to the 25-yard line for a second and nine. Hooker, again, having to use his feet, will escape out the pocket, and he'll pick up the first down and a gain of 10. There's just nothing open, man. You got Derek Stingley on the other side. It's just kind of tough to throw the football. On a first and 10, Hooker's going to get sacked, and oh, no. He grabs up the same knee he injured earlier on in the season, and... It's Joe Milton season again. Ho oh, ho, we're back with Joe Milton. Milton's going to run for a gain of seven down to a third and five. You got to be concerned about Hedden Hooker, though. It's a third and five for Milton dropping back. Looking to his left. He finds Jacob Warren. This time, Warren's going to hold on to the football. He gets absolutely blasted coming down with it. We will head into the fourth quarter down by 13. Big decision for Tennessee. They're going to go for it. We'll see if they can stay in this ball game down by 13, though. Well, fourth and two, here we go. Joe Milton on a read option. Why did I hand it off? Oh no, clown me in the comments. Please clown me. Oh my goodness. That was horrible. I should have kept. I don't know what I was doing there. I really don't know what I was doing. I mean, we just set up Tyon Evans for failure. Okay, we get the football right back. Okay, so our prayers were answered. We're going to pick it off immediately. George with the big pick. Oh my goodness, Kenneth George Jr. Thank you for this interception because now Tennessee gets another shot down at about the 30-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for Joe Milton looking to throw. He dumps it off to Javante Payton. Payton's going to pick up 12 yards down to about the 17-yard line. It will be a second and nine for Milton looking to throw. Scrambling to his left, Joe Milton's going to take off. It's kind of how Hendon Hooker got injured, but we'll take it. It's a gain of five. Third and four now for the Volunteers. Milton out the empty look. Stepping up in the pocket. And he's going to go down. He loses three yards. So now you got a fourth and seven. You still got to go for it. Here we go, man. Joe Milton makes something happen. Milton scrambling to his right. Looking. He's got a man open. We should have threw it earlier. And okay, we get it to Cedric Tillman. But Tillman's momentum takes him out of bounds. And oh, we're going to lose this game. We need a turnover quickly. Here comes LSU back with the football. It's Davis Price on the carry. I've been calling him Prince all game. Don't know why, but LSU is going to pick up 25 yards right there. Davis Price is getting the carry again. Oh my goodness. Just the, the story of the day. Someone bring this man to the ground. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry for getting your name wrong. 
Oh man, first and 10 for LSU. Max Johnson's gonna keep on a read option. Johnson breaking tackles, picking up 14 yards. Big play right there for LSU. It's now a third and 12 though. And believe it or not, if we get a stop here, it's still a two possession game. Price is only gonna pick up. Actually, he's gonna lose yards. So we're not out of it yet. Here comes the field goal by LSU. I mean, this dude is just, I mean, best kicker on the planet. I don't know. Watch out, uh, Justin Tucker. I mean, LSU's kicker is coming for your spot. It's a 16 point game. We're not out of it yet as Ole Miss man on the road up by seven against Bryce Young, John Mechie and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Huge turn of events right there in Tuscaloosa and also in the Big Ten, Ohio State going on the road, blowing out Wisconsin. Number 10, Ohio State beats number five, Wisconsin 30 to seven. Incredible. Here comes Joe Milton. We will need a miracle in Tennessee to win this one. Milton going to say a prayer, throw it deep. I don't know how Javante Payton got all that separation. We'll take it. Tennessee's got the football at the 10 yard line for a second and goal. Milton looking on the Texas route. It's going to be Princeton Fant. Fant's going to get into the end zone and it's going to come down really to this two point conversion to see if we're going to stay in this game. Here we go, man. From the three yard line, Joe Milton out the gun looking to throw to his right. We just stopped running. Okay, man, I mean, Smokey's all sad now. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, this, this day can't get any worse. We, we just made Smokey upset, and oh, we're gonna get an interception. Big pick right there in the back of the end zone. We'll take it, but like, there's a minute left. We're down by 10, down by two scores. Joe Milton again, gonna heave one up, throwing it deep, and it's gonna be Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt for 57 yards gets Tennessee all the way down to the five yard line on a second and two. Joe Milton scrambling to his right and oh, he's gonna take it himself. The problem is we're down by 10 and I don't think, I, I don't think, don't think there is a four point play here to tie this game up. The boys are pretty happy. We're gonna go for two because why not? I don't know. It's gonna get picked off in the end zone. It doesn't really matter. Because we're going to need this onside kick no matter what. And really, we're not going to be out here kicking field goals because I can't kick field goals to save my life. So here we go, man. It is the onside kick to decide this game. Let's see if we can recover. I don't get the onside kick mechanics in. Okay. Oh, goodness. Jack Mashburn's going to recover it. And the LSU Tigers are going to go to Knoxville. They will win 37-33. to And when it comes down to it, man... It was those damn drives in the red zone. We just couldn't capitalize. We had, a, what, the five-yard line once. We had, a, at what, the 15 the other time. Tennessee just couldn't capitalize. And that's going to lose you the football game. It's a long season. Stuff happens. Hennon Hooker should be okay. But honestly, we might play, uh, like, contrary to what happened in real life, we might play Joe Milton next week. I don't know. Milton has just been better we're going to have a decision to make next week. We got to go to Georgia to take on Stetson Bennett and the Bulldogs. It's a tough game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, it's probably our toughest game of the season other than Bama. We'll see what happens, man. That Georgia defense is insane against Stetson Bennett. It's having a tremendous season as well at quarterback. By the way, their backup quarterback, JT Daniels, too. We'll see what happens, man. But Tennessee is now 2-2 two and two as we look to recruiting. Just going over this real quick, we're doing pretty well. I, I think our recruiting is going to be very good. And that's why I'm so, so optimistic about the future of this team because we're gaining on a lot of these guys. Like Ron Jackson, I believe, is a five-star. Nate Wesley, we're gaining on all these other SEC schools and to the point where I think we're going to bring in a very good recruiting class. And again, again, that's why I'm so optimistic because next season, I think we're going to be very good with our freshman class. The year after the same class, I think it's going to be good in two years and even three years. I'm just so happy about the future of this team. I think we're going to get so much better. Like Serge Johnson right here. No one wants to pick up Johnson, add them to their squad. I'm going to keep recruiting them every single week. Like USC isn't all that interested in him. And I think we should be able to land him. Alan Moss here. Auburn's gaining on us, but still, I think we should be able to land Alan Moss to the team. He is a D end and a 75 overall. Could be huge for the squad. You look at some of the other prospects that we got going on here. You got a guy here in Cole McCarty who maybe we won't be able to bring in, but still we're competitive with these other schools like an AM, like an Auburn. We're able to compete 
recruiting against these schools, which will be very important in the long run for our squad. Again, we go back to Arch Manning. I just don't think it's all that possible. He's the highest quarterback, the highest player in the recruiting class. It will be tough. We will keep trying to scout him, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Marcus Goddard, I think we're going to be able to pick up. He's a five-star speed receiver, 76 overall out of high school. Looking pretty good right there. Charlie Fernandez, probably not going to get him. John Carey, very good chance we're going to get him. No one's really recruiting him, so I don't have to put too many points into his recruiting. So we should be able to get him for, you know, a low value for us. Still should make a big difference on our team, though. He's a strong safety, 74 overall. I don't think we're going to get James Davis, so I'm going to take some points off of him because I really don't think we're going to be able to bring him to the team. A guy like Travis Mack, no one's recruiting, so... Don't have to put too much into him. Taylor Novak's lost cause. Donnie Wilson, probably not going to be able to land him. The team wants to go to Nebraska. I mean, have fun, dude. I mean, sure. Okay, you don't want to come to Tennessee. Have fun, Nebraska, bro. A guy in Kyle Rogers we should be able to get. We're gaining on Texas Christian in, in Virginia Tech as well. Should be able to pick up Kyle Rogers. We'll see again. Long season ahead of us. Long recruiting season. A guy like Ben Bre Barber. Don't think we're going to get him. Georgia looks like they're going to land him. It sucks because he was one of the highest recruits in the um, recruiting class. James Norton, the kicker. One of the best kickers we should be able to get. Dominique Ingram. Don't think that one's going to happen. He's got some big deals from Penn State, USC. Don't think that one's going to work out. Same can be said about Sam. I don't think we're going to get him. Anthony Gray, sure. I mean, I really don't have to recruit him at all. He's probably going to be a Tennessee volunteer next season. Probably going to redshirt him. He's only 67 overall, but still, that's cool. Ronald Sullivan. There's a chance we could still get him because West Virginia is really not scouting him at all. So maybe, so like, I mean, honestly, we'd have, we'd have to go back, take some off some other guys. Julius Sullivan, he's a Juco player, so he's going to come in as a junior next season. It's between us and Arkansas. Really, for me, it's take or leave it, because, I mean, I don't think we really need tight ends. I'll keep it simple. Frank Moses, one of these guys, 66 overall. He, he's not getting too many offers. We could bring him in on pretty cheap. Same with Alvin Jefferson. Jefferson's a quarterback who wants to come to Tennessee. Same with Nicholas Mays, even though Missouri's trying to get him. Dennis Macklin, we can probably end up picking up. Auburn's in first place, but we're gaining 115 points on him every single week. And then you go through the prospects, man. There's still so many guys. You got the athlete as well in Richardson. And it's just a long journey trying to recruit these guys. It is a process. You got to be patient with it. And eventually, man, we will land a bunch of these prospects. In the next upcoming weeks, a lot of these guys will be coming in on visit soon. Like Maurice Brooks right here. That's huge. Because we're gaining every week. No one's really scouting him. I think we're, we're going to be able to get him pretty easily. So, again, just be on the lookout for all of this. The scouting year will continue. Probably the next episode. More scouting probably in two episodes. But, of course, do not miss out on our next Tennessee Volunteers Dynasty Mode here on the channel. It will be episode number five. We will go on the road to Georgia, to Athens, to take on the Bulldogs. So, folks, you are not going to want to miss that episode. If we can get 45 likes on this video, I will get that gameplay up either on Saturday or Sunday. Of course, Tennessee versus Georgia. You're not going to want to miss it. Georgia is the number seven team in the nation currently. And folks, thank you all for watching episode number four of the Tennessee Volunteers Dynasty Mode here on NCAA 14. If you haven't yet, though, make sure that subscribe button down below for more. Again, make sure to hit that like goal of 45 likes by Saturday or Sunday, and we will get that Tennessee Volunteers Dynasty Mode episode up this weekend. Give folks, thank you all for watching, and Mamba forever.